Welcome back, I am SV and today we are continuous create our game in Unreal Engine 4. It our 2D project, so uh, if you are first on my channel, just jump back and check my previous tutorials. Today we are continuous create our game, I think the name of this game will be Bull. Okay, what we are doing today? Uh, today we are create some big bash will be on front of my, uh, of my picture. We are going to blueprints. We are take, maybe we are take our bash small, just copy, paste, and rename it for ba uh, bash big, something like that. Okay, open, bash small, I rename for bash big. This also I rename and put inside some bashes. Okay, so it's taking time. If you don't know how to create these bushes, just check my first tutorials in this uh, playlist. Uh, you will find some tutorials with uh, Cinema 4D and step by step you can create same object for your oven game. It's very simple and very interesting. And finally, you can get your oven game, maybe for your children's ch children. Sorry, maybe for play market, maybe for your business project. It's it's up to you. Okay, it is done. Save. Very good. What I get like this. Um, so big bash. Uh, I no need this translucency priority. I just delete it, make like this. Uh, what size will be of these bushes? I put it very big, so maybe it will be from 0 0.2 to 0 0.25. And uh, third priority I will make only one time because I render it, it will be, I don't know, 150, maybe something like that. Okay, now we are going for our actor spawn actor, whereas we have spawn everything. I just copy this small bash and put somewhere here. Uh, you can check other tutorials how to create it step by step. I already explained it. Today I don't lose a time for this. Today we are just create a spawn big bash. Something like that. Very good. So range will be from two up to maybe six seconds, something like this. Now we are going here. Okay, very nice. Bash. And maybe I will put it somewhere down for minus 80, something like this. So play and check what I have. Yeah, of course now it no, is not coming because I forget to change inside in the spawn actor, not small bash, I have to change for big, big bash. Okay, now it will go. Check please. And look at this. We are start jump, start spawning and what I have? Okay. I have some forward jump, uh, bash, sorry. And I still cannot see some, some bash which should be here. Why is like this? I not understood. So now we will check. Now we will check what's the problem with my bushes and where is my bushes. Uh, big bash every two or six seconds created. Maybe here I'm going to big bash. Okay, it's coming. Select it. I have size, normal size. Big bash here. Where is the problem? I still not understand. I not understand. So maybe I put zero for a moment. We will see. Play. Mm -hmm. Still I cannot see. Why? Now we have to try to find and fix this problem. So I have small bash. 
but I cannot see big bash. Okay, maybe my problem is here. I have big bash, then I have to put again big bash, event to big bash, and then copy that and put somewhere here. You remember this all our start. Yeah, I forget to make it like this. So now we will check and I think now everything working perfectly. So play and wait a little bit. So what we have, okay, I have very big bash, it's coming. Now I put it little bit down, going here and put it little bit down, like I told you, maybe minus 80. Check and play. Okay, yeah, you see, I have this bash, it's coming on front of me. Uh, front to the camera, but I cannot see any parallax effect. As you know, everything what is uh, closer to camera moving more faster than everything what is behind the camera. So how to fix it? We are going to spawn and we are take this big bash going somewhere here and increase speed for minus 150. Minus because everything going to from right to left. Uh, save and play. Now we will see. Now should be some very interesting parallax effect. Yeah, you see this bash coming. And I have very interesting parallax effect. Now I feel a depth of this game. So, um, looks like very nice. But what I don't like, uh, this bash which is on front of me, very bright. Very bright and... I like to make it more dark. So how to do it? It's very, very simple. We are going for my texture and select my big bushes, all my big bush, something like that. Then going to edit. And everything what I change here will change in my sprite and in my game automatically. So here, like I told you in my some first tutorials, here I have some color correction options. So I have brightness and I reduce this brightness for 0.3 to make it more dark, something like that. Save, close. 0.3, save, close. 0.3. Uh, by this reducing of darkness, I just to take out our focus from this bush. So it will be just like a for not background, like a forward ground, yes. It will be not so bright, it will be dark, it moving very fast, so uh, I can focus it on my game. Now we will see if it's working or not, or it's just my crazy idea, we will see. Okay, it is done. Uh, compile and play. And look, look at the different. You can check a little bit before and check now. What I have, so now my bash will be more dark. Uh, you see, now my bash more dark and I'm not focused on that. So it's like a forward ground, it's moving very fast. I have some little bit like a blurry effect and it looks like very nice. So I think I'll keep like this and all time you see my bash is coming some different size. I have different trees, uh, so it's, it's really very nice. Uh, now I can add some clouds. Uh, okay, we are going to my blueprints folder and we are create some cloud. Maybe I will make a copy of my any bash, maybe bash, this small bash. Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Object, right click, rename and I rename it to object cloud, something like that. Open this actor. First of all, rename this uh, sprite for cloud, something like this, and rename this array, paper sprite array, sorry. Where is this? Also for cloud, something like this. Compile, and now we will add all my clouds. So open and change all my bushes to cloud. We'll start from zero, like usually, yeah. Again, it's taking time. Mm, 
-hmm. Almost finish. Okay, I have one more cloud, so I add one more array element going down and put this cloud number 10, something like this. It's depend. If you have more different clouds, so do it without any problem. Uh, we are going and we will check. First of all, first of all, I put my integer range somewhere from 5, I mean sort priority yes, to 20, something like that. After that, I am going to yeah, this I no need. I am going to random floating in range, some size. So it will be from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. Will be small and big clouds. Very nice. So I create my actor. Uh, check my first tutorial. Now I show you, I explain you a little bit one more time. So I have one paper sprite component. Every time when my actor coming on the scene, this paper sprite change this paper sprite, you see target, change for new sprites. New sprites coming from this array. I put many, many different sprites inside and by this formula, I get randomly one sprite. After that, I add some random sort priority for rendering. It means one uh, cloud will be behind, one forward, it doesn't matter, it will be randomly. After that, I, ma I make a random size for every my cloud. One will be from 0 0.1, other will be 0 0.2, 0 0.15, so will be random size. Then I'm going to spawn, and now I have to spawn this actor. So, what we can do? Uh, I don't know. We can, we can, we can, we can. Spawn tree. Copy. Past doesn't matter spawn tree or something else so first of all i rename for cloud something like this this custom event i also rename for spawn cloud yeah don't forget this is just name it's not any formula or nothing it's just name i can put any name what i like and anyway it will work so after that i'm going on the back and make like this cloud spawn cloud again very good so what next, what I'm doing next, uh, I put somewhere here, again, one more pin, put down, and call this spawn cloud. Very good. Uh, what next? Where is my clouds? Here I have to change object tree for object cloud. It means I will spawn this actor. Uh, so, uh, Time, time maybe I will keep like this from 5 to 0, 5 to 2 seconds. Maybe not 2 seconds will be too much cloud. Or or we can we can check. So we can check now. What we are doing, compile and play. Now we will see what is going on. So where is will be my clouds? Aha, it's here, you see. It looks like snow, it looks like not cloud. It's somewhere downstairs. So now we will try to fix this problem. Uh, every time when I spawn my actor, it spawn on the on on these coordinates x and z. So I like to split this structure, something like that. And you see the z. For example, now I put the z for 100. Compile and play. We will see what will be now. We have to wait, and you see all my clouds now in this position. So I have different size, but all my clouds in same position without any changing. So uh, we can random it. I put random float in range, and random will be from 100 maybe to 250, something like this. You can check how you like it, but we will try like this. And I have many, many clouds, so I change my 
um, maximum for three seconds. So minimum will be 0 0.5, maximum will be three seconds. And also I reduce the speed for parallax effect. Like I told you, everything what is too close to the camera have more speed than everything what is far away. So my clouds in my project will be very far away. It means I will put somewhere minus 50, something like this. Play and check our result. Okay, coming some trees. I have some clouds. You see it's parallax effect. It's far away. Some very high. Some, some clouds coming down. I have small. I have big. You see it is like a same, but due to different size, it looks like different. Yeah. And I have many, many different clouds and my games already looks like very nice. Okay, so now I will... Okay, I lose my life and like I promised you in my previous tutorial, I will add some information to my game over widget. So your score, as you can see, I have this 888 and I like to change it, change it now. Now we have little bit time up to end of this tutorial. So we are going to our widget and going for game over widget, something like that. Okay. Um, I put animation somewhere here just to see. Okay, this score and this text, you see. I rename your score, something like this. It will be very simple to understood. And this will be like a high score. Okay, high score, this text. I will add letter when we are talk about saving of the game. In some my future tutorial, I don't know when exactly, we will see, but I will tell you how to save our project, how to save our game. But for a moment, we will change only this your score just to receive some result. Okay, we are take this your score selected, then we are going for text. And as you can see here, we can put manually but also we can add some formula. So if I'm going to bind and put it here, I can create new binding or binding create. Yeah, I have, I have some, I don't know how it's calling some function, which is get your score text and return not somewhere here. I have to put information. So how to do it? As you remember, my information about score, we are going to blueprints, going to my pound, and I have it here, score. I have here its variable and score calculation, I have here, my score coming here. So I have to, how it's calling, to link my pound with game over widget. For this reason, I can make a cast. Cast my pawn, yeah, just my pawn, cast to my pawn, cast. Then from here I put a pawn, get player pawn. It means I cast it. What I'm doing next? From my pawn I take a score, get score. And this score I put here, just like this. And automatically my score, my integer value converted to text value. Okay, it is done. So uh, also I can increase time for this calculation by uh, sometimes it's not necessary to cast to my pound. I can make like this, right click and convert to pure cast, something like this. So like this, I will increase a uh, speed of calculation of this, uh, like a formula or how it's calling. Yeah, before my rope connected from this to pound and then here, and now I have very fast only one rope and here coming like an automatical calculation. Yes, uh, it's working not all time. It's working only when you 100% sure that my pound it's working, get to my pound working, you have, uh, good value everything in other way if you are put compile you cannot see any error and it's not working but now i am sure that i put everything correct and i just increase the speed maybe it's just something like okay uh, maybe we can see so compile 
you see my compile coming 179 179 something like that but if i going back to this and i i just like to check if will be very big different or not because i saw some manuals compile so it's almost same maybe it's just little bit increasing so maybe i will make like this like in some manuals uh, so it doesn't matter play and check now i will over jump you remember last time when i have a game over widget i have all time 888 eight, eight, eight. Uh, but now we will see. So I jump one, two, and now four will be uh, for damage. So it's mean my score will be six. Game over and why five? Ah, okay, because I not uh, not over jump last one. My score five. So it's mean it's working and it's really nice. And for a moment, my tutorial finish it. Thank you very much for watching. I save this project and kindly ask you to subscribe to my channel, put like, share with your friends and see you next time. Please don't miss my next tutorials, will be more interesting. Goodbye friends.